Today's video is brought to you by the state of Massachusetts and lawmakers seeing just how far they can go. I bring you from the Boston Globe, Boston proposes state law requiring doctors to ask about guns in homes. Uh, how about it's none of your damn business? Now, back in the merry old days of 2014, I had mentioned that the MSDP, or Massachusetts Standardized Data Project, began including questions about gun ownership on their behavioral health risk assessment forms. I'm not going to show any clips from that video or link that video because, frankly, it was literally my second YouTube video ever and therefore trash. Seriously, just look at that sexy thumbnail. Anyways, the video exists, it is out there, it was something that happened back in 2014 but was exclusive to mental health. Back then, it was part of the standard risk assessment given to anyone at a managed care facility or clinic and was part of the standard intake paperwork, regardless of whether or not anything had actually happened to warrant a risk assessment. In other words, these questions were and still are posed to people even if they have made no indication at all that they wanted to hurt themselves or someone else. But, as part of the MSDP, these assessments were only given to people at mental health clinics participating in the MSDP, which are typically organizations associated with the Department of Mental Health, the regular Department of Health, or community clinics that mostly take Medicare, Medicaid, or the Massachusetts version called MassHealth. Now, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh has announced that he plans to push state legislation that would require all doctors to ask their patients about gun ownership. This includes asking kids if there are guns in the home, how they feel about having guns in the home, and whether or not they ever have access to those guns. According to Boston Police Commissioner Gross, this is a great way for the medical field to help identify any red flag issues. Which is a big ol' red flag itself if you ask me. Massachusetts does, of course, have a red flag law that allows family members, baby mamas, ex-spouses, and police to file extreme risk protection orders that force gun owners to give up their guns and permits for up to one year and puts them in a federal database. There's also an emergency version in which all of a person's guns are confiscated immediately, without a hearing. But if gun control advocates have taught us anything, it's that us gun owners are second-class citizens without the right to due process. Well, I say we kill the means! Now, mind you, doctors are supposedly not going to put it anywhere in your medical record that you own guns, even though the law would ask doctors to use that knowledge of your gun ownership to recommend certain interventions or push you towards various resources. I don't know about in the medical world, but in the mental health world, if we're recommending a certain intervention or resource, we're supposed to write down why. And the place we write it is the record. Even if this isn't going in the record, I don't understand how personal information about gun ownership is supposed to be used to stop what they're calling a public health crisis if it isn't going to be documented anywhere. If it isn't documented, how are lawmakers and police even going to know that doctors are being compliant and following the law? Think about that one. It's a trap! Politicians claim that Massachusetts is the nationwide leader in gun control and is the safest state in the nation due to its gun control laws. In reality, according to a 2017 FBI crime report, Massachusetts ranks 12th in the nation for gun-related homicides, but that's a story for another video. This new law, like all the others, would do very little to prevent violent crime or suicide. Why? Besides the fact that criminals aren't likely to be very honest, Massachusetts already has a series of laws for the exact situations of trying to prevent harm to self or others. Both medical and mental health professionals are mandated reporters in Massachusetts, and mental health workers are subject to tear-off laws. That means that if someone makes any indication of being dangerous to themselves, a risk assessment, including asking 
questions about access to any lethal means has to be done on the spot, and then the person has to be sent to a hospital to be evaluated. In the case of a person threatening someone else, Tarasov dictates that a mental health clinician not only assess for dangerousness and access to weapons, but also warn any potential victims. While the law is geared specifically towards those in the mental health field, several Massachusetts doctors, hospitals, and nurses have been sued successfully for negligence in failing to warn people of potential threats. So being able to ask questions about guns when there is a clear and present danger is not an issue. Both Forbes and the Annals of Internal Medicine also touched on this back in 2016, declaring that Yes, we can! Ask patients about their guns and disclose that information to third parties when you feel it's necessary. Though the problem here is that this is dependent on each individual doctor's definition of necessary. This new proposal that would require doctors to ask about gun ownership and storage, which they likely know nothing about, has not yet been released to the public, so we can't go over the finer points just yet. But the idea of such a law is nothing new to Massachusetts. Attorney General Maura Healey, the notoriously anti-gun AG who is somehow responsible for making as many unconstitutional gun laws as possible, despite the fact that she has no business making making gun laws, <laughs> announced a plan to begin making doctors responsible for preventing gun violence back in early 2017. That time, instead of penning a letter and declaring it the law of the land overnight, which is her favorite way to do things, the plan came in the form of continuing education for health providers and informational pamphlets for both doctor and patient. At the time, she said it was no different than doctors regularly asking about backyard swimming pools or fire hazards, though I personally have never had a doctor ask me about swimming pools or fire hazards. Whoa! The goal, according to Healy, was to treat gun violence as a public health issue. There's that phrase again. And her partner organization, the Massachusetts Medical Society, agreed, saying that it was imperative that doctors inform patients of the risks of gun ownership. Let me repeat, the risks of gun ownership. Not the risks of not following basic gun safety, not the risks of not teaching your children about the importance of gun safety, just gun ownership as if wanting to protect yourself or your family is inherently dangerous. But it's really no surprise when most medical journals take the unfortunate and ignorant stance that yes, gun ownership is dangerous, and very few studies ever look at the benefits. Now, if you combine requiring doctors to ask, by law, about gun ownership, along with telling doctors how horribly dangerous it is, you could have situations like a 2010 incident in Florida in which a pediatrician refused to see several children because their parents would not answer whether or not they had a gun in the home. When the family complained and hired a lawyer, it sparked a debate about patient privacy and gun ownership that a doctor writing for the Washington Post actually dismissed as being anti-science. I've known some medical and mental health workers that even consider gun ownership as a sign of antisocial or deviant behavior. And to top it off, the American Association of Pediatrics recommends that doctors tell parents to remove guns from the home completely. So it's pretty easy to imagine this becoming a slippery slope. The fact that Massachusetts lawmakers think that they're leading and inspiring the nation to enact more gun control is also a slippery slope. Now, Mayor Marty Walsh isn't a part of the legislature, so he can't personally pass this bill, but he does have a big pull on state politics. And that's problematic, especially when he's got the Boston police and the attorney general on his team. Unfortunately, I honestly can't see any reason why this law won't get passed. Yes, it's terrible and probably unconstitutional, but if you've watched any of my other videos about Massachusetts gun laws, you already know that Massachusetts doesn't care about constitutional. Gun owners are already highly stigmatized in blue states like Massachusetts, and this is just another backdoor way of freezing out the Second Amendment for its citizens. Gun ownership is not a medical issue, and it's not something that needs to be cured in a doctor's office. 
That is your Second Amendment and firearm news for the week. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or drop me a comment, and or drop me a comment, <laughs> as it does help the channel, and I do read every single one. I might not always answer because realistically, I might not know what to say back, <laughs> but I do read them. And if you really like my channel and want to help support it in other ways, you can do so over at Patreon or through a one-time donation through PayPal or crypto. As always, thanks for watching, stay safe, and happy shooting.